Hola farmsteaders, my name is Mac and welcome back to Youper Country Farms. Today we're missing Jose, so I thought I would take an opportunity to get in the kitchen and cook up some rabbit soup. So many people ask me what to do when they're preparing rabbit. We raise rabbit here on the farm and I'll tell you it is one of Jose and I's favorite meats to cook with. And the reason is it's very low in cholesterol and there's very little fat in it. I made a uh, rabbit curry the other night and Jose said to me, wow, he said the rabbit is so much better in here than the chicken. And I have to agree. So I put this rabbit in about four hours ago. I did a, a four hour high cook for it. The one thing you want to be very careful with uh, rabbit, and most people will complain about this, is they say rabbit is too dry. If you overcook your rabbit, I tell you, it'll be a dry meat. But if you take the time and learn how to really prepare it, rabbit is so incredible and very rarely dry. What I want to do first is take the rabbit out of the crock pot here and put it into a bowl so it cools because I'm going to need to pull the meat off the bone and I don't want it to be hot when I'm doing that. So this morning when I put the rabbit in the crock pot, uh, I always season it. So the first thing I did is I added an onion, I added one clove of garlic, and then I put some seasoning on top. What I did was oregano and then this uh, peppered rosemary that I got at our local spice merchant shop, which is downtown Marquette. It's fantastic. So I put that on top. And one of my favorite things to cook with rabbit is rosemary. And the other thing when it's in season is sage. I don't have fresh sage today, so I went with the rosemary. All right, let's get this rabbit out of the pot. Okay, we're going to set this aside and let it cool. But look how amazing that is. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to remove all the juices uh, that are in the crock pot. Now, anytime I'm doing a soup, I put about two cups of water in here because I want to create a broth that I can then transfer into the soup. Okay, so not counting what I spilled all over my countertop, I got a close to four cups of broth out of the crock pot. I'm going to add enough water to bring this to a full four cups. We'll do that in a few minutes. Set it aside for now. Okay, so then let's talk a little bit about the ingredients for this soup. I really like to cook with what I've grown here on the farm or what I've produced here on the farm. So let's start with those ingredients first. I'm going to add a full quart of turkey broth. This was broth I did after Thanksgiving. We did a 14 pound turkey that we had raised here on the farm and I cooked down a lot of broth after that. Then I have green beans. I don't usually put green beans in my chicken soup, but I'm going to do it today because I need to use up uh, some of the beans we have in the basement. We have quite a few from last season, so I'm going to put a can of beans. I am going to put a jar of corn. This stuff is amazing. You know, I used to buy can regular canned corn, and now that I've been canning my own, the difference in flavor is unbelievable. So one pint of my canned corn, and then one pint of white beans. Then I'm going to do a couple of onions. I'll probably do, I really like onions, so maybe I'll do three of these smaller guys uh, right here. And then you're going to want some carrots. I have four. And of course celery. This stuff's amazing, but these I did not grow on my farm. We did not grow very many carrots this last year and we did not grow uh, very much celery and what we did grow was really small so it wouldn't have lasted the winter. So I had to buy these at the grocery store. And then two cloves of garlic are going to go in. Again, these are not garlic I grew because we did not start uh, our farm until last spring. We did not get garlic in the year before. So this next year we'll have our own garlic which I'm excited about. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get a big pot going on a burner, and then I'm going to get my onions cut up. Okay, so I went ahead and used four small onions uh, instead of the three. We really love onions, and 
I know I've said it before on my videos, but you can adjust any recipe you want to make it more what of what you would like. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell you, I never follow a recipe. Very rarely. Uh, you know, if you're cooking cakes and such, you really don't have a choice because you have to get the ingredients to be at certain levels. But when you're cooking a soup or a stew or uh, you know, any meal for yourself for dinner, adjust the ingredients to what it is that you want. So if you're, you would prefer more celery, add more celery. If you would prefer more carrots, add more carrots. If you don't like carrots, don't put carrots in. Okay, so while I cut up the celery, I'm gonna get the uh, onions cooking down on the stove. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. Usually when I'm sauteing onions, I just use water. Put the burner on medium high to get them started. I added about eight stalks of celery into the pan. Now I'm gonna do my garlic. I have uh, three cloves here. They're fairly good size, but I like garlic. So now I've chopped the carrots, the onions, the celery, and the garlic. They're all in the pot, uh, cooking down a little bit. I'm going to add the broth from the crock pot into there and let it cook down for maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to bring that to a nice boil. While I do that, I'm going to debone this rabbit and show you what kind of meat you're going to get off of a rabbit. Here on the farm, we raise a heritage breed of meat rabbits called the Silver Fox, and they're a fairly good sized rabbit. We usually butcher between three and four months, and there's a big difference in the two age groups. If we butcher at three months, we're gonna get about a three pound rabbit. If we butcher at four months, it's gonna be four to four and a half pounds of butchered weight. So I wanna show you a little bit of what you can expect after you cook up a rabbit that you buy at the store or from a farm. So the biggest part of the meat you're gonna get is off the hind legs. Rabbits have a lot of meat on their hind legs. So you just wanna pull all that off. So once you remove the leg meat off the bone, you're gonna be left with, you know, just a little bit of bone. And here on the farm, nothing goes to waste. So of course, we will be saving this in the freezer to put it into a bone broth. Uh, and I'll do a video for that at some other point. Okay, so once you have the meat off the hind legs, the next thing will be your back straps. And rabbits have pretty large back straps, I'd say, for the size of uh, animal they are. So this is a back strap here. And there's another one here. This is the meat that grows right along the backbone. And this is some of the best meat on the rabbit, in my opinion. Let's just try it out. Oh, that's good. I say it's very similar to a chicken breast. Okay, so I've pulled the back straps. Now I want to pull the meat off of the shoulder and the arms. You can see how nice and juicy this um, shoulder meat is. Mm, so good. It's definitely probably my favorite meat off the rabbit. The two front legs are not going to have a whole lot of meat on them. So after cleaning the rabbit, you can see there's not a lot left. This will all go into a bag in the freezer. I have one other carcass in there that I'm gonna use for bone broth. And once I have about four pounds of bones, I'm gonna cook up a batch of bone broth for you. But you can see, look at this, off of about a three and a half pound rabbit, I have a lot of meat here. That's one of the things I like about rabbit is I feel like it really dresses out with a lot of meat on it. All right, so let's check in on the soup on the stove and see if it's ready for the other ingredients. Now that these vegetables have cooked down really nice, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna save the chicken for very last. So 
So whenever I'm making a soup with my canned goods, I always use the juice from inside of the jar to go into the soup because it adds flavor and if any of the vitamins or nutrients from the food has cooked into that juice in the jar, I want to keep that. So I'm going to add them uh, full into the pan. Now that I have all the vegetables in the pan, I'm going to add the meat in. So as you can see, I've added about half of the rabbit now into the pot, and I think that's about enough. I really am a vegetable fan, so I prefer more vegetables than meat. But of course, add whatever it is that makes you happy. What I'm going to do with this is put it in the refrigerator, and then I'm going to chop it up in a day or two. And I think what I'll probably end up making is rabbit fried rice because that sounds incredible this time of year. I love comfort food, and that is a great dish to have for a nice hot lunch. Okay, so other vegetables you can add to your rabbit soup. Peas, of course, are incredible. Our favorite thing in the summer would be summer squash, so zucchini or yellow squash. You want to add that in right at the very end so they don't get too soggy in your soup. And the other vegetable I really like to add is maybe a yellow pepper or a red pepper. It adds a sweet tanginess to the soup uh, that gives it a little bit different flavor. The only thing left to add now is uh, the herbs. So because I did the rabbit in the crock pot with this peppered rosemary and the oregano, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that to the pan. Again, this is by taste. There is no specified amount, and in my house, we do very little measuring. The last thing is salt. I don't use salt when I'm canning because I like to have the option to add or not add when I'm uh, creating whatever dish I'm creating. So I'm also going to add a little bit of salt to the soup just because it won't have salt in it otherwise. So that's how I make our rabbit soup. If you've never eaten rabbit, I really encourage you to give it a try. It tends to be a little more on the expensive side, but it's a great meat to be using in soups and stews. We love it in our curry, and I know a lot of you have been asking for a curry video, so I'll try to get that up here in the next few weeks because we can't go more than a couple of weeks without eating curry, so I would love to make that up for you. Now the only thing left to do is wait for Jose to get home. Okay, so I went outside to do the chores, and look who came home! Me! <laughs> Welcome back, Jose. We were talking about you earlier. Yeah? Hmm. Hmm. I swear it was all good stuff, okay, right, okay. everybody? Okay. Hmm. All right, so Jose and I are going to sample our soup. Remember, this is rabbit soup right here. Are you first or am I first? Me. But I made it. Oh. <laughs> One scoop or two? Two. Yeah, I figured. He'll probably have three, four, and five <laughs> later. <laughs> all right. Oh, this oh. looks amazing. Okay, I always make a massive pot of soup. Why is that, Jose? I don't know. Because no, well, I don't idea. Mm -hmm. One reason, of course, is because Jose eats a lot. The other reason is so I don't have to cook every night. Yeah. So every night we do something a little bit different with the soup. One of the things Jose really likes is he likes to put a little squeeze of lime in his soup oh, with yeah. a little bit of hot sauce. He really <laughs> likes that. Uh, tomorrow night we'll probably add some rice, mm -hmm. make it a little more interesting, and the night after that we'll add pasta, make oh. it like a rabbit noodle soup. Um, and that just helps to keep it different and interesting. Lots, lots of things you can do with this soup. But usually on the first night we eat it straight up. Here we go, Jose. Mm. Oh, it's really good. It's, wow. It's really good. Mmm. Do you wish you could have a little? Yeah, you probably do. Give me more, give me more. Mm -mm. No. You have to finish what's in your bowl first. Oh, <laughs> mm. oh my goodness. No kidding. It's this good. soup is unbelievable. Yep. Oh. Now I just have to finish chewing so I'm not talking with my mouth. Mm. <laughs> wow. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. 
Jose loves when he comes home from uh, working off site and he has a beautiful dinner waiting. Especially, I mean, a beautiful wife. <laughs> Especially when it's um, warm. When it's warm. It's yeah. always nice to come home to a warm dinner. Yeah. All right, Jose, anything else? Besides more soup? Uh, no. no, no, wait. <laughs> Okay, well, if you are a farmsteader or a homesteader, you live in or love the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, you think Jose and I are somewhat entertaining, we hope that you will hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you liked this video. You know, we love making videos yep. for all of you. Again, we are Mac. And Jose. And this is Uber Country Farms. Thank you. All right, you can eat again. Okay. Well, now. Okay, go. Okay. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good, thank you. Yeah, good another scoop. Mm. Can I get more? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course.